a brief recap <laughs> of my last year. <laughs> show ever in the history of the world. I walked outside, there's all this press there, I'm like, yeah, people know this fucking show is something. But everyone goes, what do you think, what do you think? I'm like, what do I think? It's better than Les Mis! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Donald Trump? What about Donald Trump? <laughs> he said your name today in the debates. <laughs> he what? <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's life changed that day. <laughs> As my 17-year-old son, Blakey, says, you bought a ticket for the Depress Express. <laughs> and I did. Here's how it went down. My daughter, who had been in residential treatment for some serious brain damage in utero, ran away. My father died. My incestuous, priest-like, damaged father died. He had never met my children. I had a heart attack. My four-year-old daughter was diagnosed autistic in October. In November, I got a pilot for Showtime. I said to my therapist, I'm so excited, it's a great role, but I'm gonna be alone in Boston on election night. Now, I, I sent in my absentee ballot, but do you think I should do that? Because I'm gonna be alone, and what if he wins? To which she replied, Rosie, we've been working on this for many, many months. <laughs> Your constant negative attitude does not help your major depressive disorder. We have you on an SSRI at a very high dose. There's not much more we can do. Get your shit together, Rosie. Stop imagining the impossible worst case scenario. Rosie, go to Boston! Wow. This is my fifth public appearance since he won. Thank you. I decided if I must get out of the house, it must be to my tribe, my gays. New York City. I even gave out, gave out a few Hey, You're Gay awards. Which just is the latest person to come out. Speaking of coming out, the man we're roasting tonight was the second person to publicly out me. I know it was not really a shock to anyone in this room that I was a big fucking lesbian. But Middle America apparently was confused. <laughs> and Michael Musto was a very pissed off fan. <laughs> he outed me. I spent many a day in therapy talking about the outer. <laughs> That's what I called him for years. I'd see him at events, Broadway openings. I'm like, hey, it's you, the outer. <laughs> <laughs> seem to be very troubled by dykey gay women who refuse to acknowledge their lesbianism. <laughs> I think it's because in high school we used to beat up people for them. <laughs> and they now feel somewhat betrayed, you know? I always looked at Michael Musto and went, ugh, he's mad at me, but he's Todd Bishop. Todd Bishop at Cum South was put in the locker every fucking day until I couldn't take it anymore. And I kicked the shit out of Rob DeShulo. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ugly that
that shoe for me? <laughs> She's been called fat, ugly, nasty, washed up, talented as a bad mother. And that was just today's tweet from the White House. <laughs> she left. Uh, Aura, Aura for Orpha, whatever, listen, but I didn't know who this bitch was. And it was quite difficult because here I was spending my entire morning, seriously, I had no idea. I had a few cocktails and I thought, shit, Oprah's gonna be there. So I spent my day writing a hundred jokes about Gail eating her fucking muff and find out it's that white privilege kind. Fuck her! They didn't plan, whatever the fuck it was, white people. Johnny from Scruff is here. Yeah, and the crowd goes tepid. <laughs> Johnny's here, he's the founder of Scruff. There are most of you gay people know. It's Grinder's overweight, hairy, less attractive cousin. <laughs> Scruff also has a new app, and it tells you where the scene maker Michael Musto will be every day. So once you find out, you go someplace else. <laughs> Here, theater critic, it's always fun to have a white person on stage or a lesbian, Judy Cole, what a cunt. But we all know, I don't know if you know this, just some information I'd like to give you. Rival is a French name and it means pissy old queen. <laughs> Michael's, Michael's the only person in the world other than Trump who thinks Meryl Streep is overrated. And Michael has the power to close a Broadway show. He really does have the power. And it's not because of his scathing reviews, it's because he puts Rosie O'Donnell in it. <laughs> oh, is that taboo? Uh, <laughs> which is less than she paid for that last kid. I... <laughs> we also have here Crystal Demure, as I like to say. We wish Todrick was back. <laughs> that was rude. Nobody's ever said that. <laughs> I really think Crystal Demure is gorgeous. I mean, she really does look like RuPaul six seasons ago. But she's got a good look. And one thing I have to say, though, with genius is that your name is Crystal, and I say it's pretty fucking fabulous. So we all get to choose our drag names, but you should be a little more careful next time. Because if you go past the trailer park screaming, Crystal, Crystal, you get a whole different audience. <laughs> Randy Rainbow is here, and we're gonna say Randy Rainbow is everyone's flavor of the month, Randy. And you know that flavors melt, because look, this is your career, Bruce Willis, 27 years later. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> you know, Randy Rainbow, Randy Rainbow, and I have to read this because it's very difficult to say because he's a dear friend of mine. And I use that term loosely, like his asshole. But Randy Rainbow is proof that you can be smart, edgy, funny, and cute and still have only a handful of queens on Facebook that know who you are. Oh. <laughs> Don't turn on me, cunt. <laughs> I don't really know who Randy Rainbow is, but by, by the looks of his name, I guarantee that he's not allowed 800 feet anywhere near a great school. <laughs> now, Judy Gold, when I was a young child, my mother taught me, actually, my mother, my mother taught me, he says, you know, early on, is that you are a scary fuck. Kidding. He actually said, don't say anything bad about anyone. So we're gonna say, Judy Gold was here. Now, <laughs> Judy Gold is an accomplished comedy writer, which may not have been evident when she was up here tonight, but... <laughs> Judy reminds me of Amy Schumer, except older, dykey, and not as funny. Now, we have Lucy the Slut, who's here tonight. Lucy's over here in the corner, poor girl. She's been sitting there. It's quite amazing. I gotta say that it's true. Lucy has worked with Elizabeth Ann Bird, and she's the second most famous puppet handler in the world, other than Vladimir Putin. Oh. what she does, puppeteering. Rosie O'Donnell calls it fisting, and Bruce Valanche calls it a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we have season five winner from RuPaul's Drag Race, my dear sister Jinx Monsoon is here. You witnessed those 20 minutes you're never gonna get back of your life. <laughs> and I gotta say that Jinx looks like she came from, Buk from a Bukaki party at a clown college. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Let's be honest. She is my sister. And what has not been said about James Monsoon? That she's smart, talented, funny, gorgeous. All of those things have not been said about James Monsoon. <laughs> I mean, Jinx sent me a text yesterday, and she was concerned. She said, I'm going to say some horrible things about you. Are you okay with that? I said, it's fine. You can say whatever you like. She goes, how many drunk jokes do you have about me? I said, none. They can see you. Pactus <laughs> Luan is here. 
<laughs> she makes me feel like a star. <laughs> Many people say that countless little man was a gold digger. So I looked her up on the internet, totally untrue. She may look like it, but she wasn't even in California in the 1840s. <laughs> as a reality star. And I called my friends at William Morris. Yes, I have fans, I have very fancy friends. And they told me that the definition of a reality star is a person with no talent being mean to other people to draw attention to themselves. <laughs> Which basically means she and Donald Trump have something in common other than the fact that both of their spouses live in New York. <laughs> Luann, if you were a real housewife, and not a singer, actress, dancer, <laughs> you'd have your living maid fighting with those other bitches' maids and you'd be fucking the pool boy at the Waldorf. Not that skinny white fuck you have here called Tom that none of us would fuck with a ten-foot pole. <laughs> yes. We're also honoring Michael Booster tonight. This is serious. So we say we're honoring Michael Booster. And by honor, I mean we're making fun of him so he stays somewhat relevant and awake. What's interesting, <laughs> I'm so glad that Michael Booster actually showed up. We're just only missing his one reader. Now, Michael, <laughs> back in the 80s, Michael was the face of the Village Voice. Now he's the ass of desperation. <laughs> He's done a lot. He survived the AIDS crisis. He really did. He's right. He's not because he was careful or wise. With that face, nobody would fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Except your stylist. My <laughs> I'm so sad to see you're not wearing one of those beaded Bill Cosby sweaters. <laughs> calling me home. <laughs> uh, now I gotta say this though, is that Mike, you, Mike you, most people don't know that Michael has a very, very sweet side. And I remember way back when I first moved to New York, I saw Michael and he was helping out that drug addict, Michael Allen, get a big heavy trunk into a cab. But I, I, I said, now that's an angel. <laughs> In 2013, when Michael got fired by the Village Voice, we were all so confused. We thought that stopped being published in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Laid off. <laughs> Whatever. Also, 30 years of kissing celebrity ass, and this is what shows up to your roast. <laughs> Please, there were bigger celebrities at Trump's inaugural. Now, 